Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final session in the three-part panel discussion series, Blood Cancer Explained, hosted by AbbVie. In the first two episodes, we discussed what distinguishes blood cancer and its treatment from other forms of cancer, plus information about how blood cancer impacts our society. Today, our partners from the Advanced Practitioner Society for Hematology and Oncology and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society return to discuss how cancer research and new treatments are addressing unmet needs for patients diagnosed with rare or difficult to treat blood cancers. First of all, I'd like to thank all of the panelists for the incredibly valuable information you've shared with all of us. And I think this information will be genuinely useful for those who are starting on a blood cancer um, diagnosis journey and the caregiver um, who supports them and the healthcare community that surrounds them. So thank you very much. Are there any other key messages or resources that you would really like for a blood cancer patient um, or their caregiver to know about? In the last decade, 52 new drugs were approved by the FDA for the treatment of blood cancers, and that's just in the last decade. So if patients understand you know, how quickly uh, things are happening, and things don't happen quickly, unfortunately, in cancer and in, in cancer research, but the researchers in the field of oncology or the field of cancer are working so hard and, and making so many strides that our patients have a lot more options than they used to. And we're treating many types of cancers, even the chronic types of cancers, and that's one of the main goals is to have a patient be able to live a normal life, be able to do the things that they wanna do. We're not just treating numbers, uh, we're treating the numbers so that the patient can do what they need to do. So I think that's an important thing to bring up. Great. Yeah, Alexis at Abby, um, sometimes we call those moments, you know, bringing back the magic of normal and what it means to have a normal moment and how special that is um, and, and how you can forget about that normal moment when you've been diagnosed with something like a cancer. So thank you very much for that. Mariana. What I would like uh, here to, for patients with blood cancer to understand is that we at Abvi are fully committed to advance discovery, invasion, and care for people with blood cancers. And we are, every day here, we are diligently working in order to develop treatments for patients with blood cancer, including those patients with blood cancers that are very difficult to treat or patients who have no other options available with current treatments. One, you don't have to go through this alone. There's a lot of support out there. There's a lot of organizations like the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society who want to help you and, and help you understand what you have and, and give you the support that you need. The second thing like we've been talking about with um, is clinical trials and how important they are and how the reason that we are making so many advances in blood cancer research right now is because so many people have been willing to go into clinical trials. And if it's something that you'd be interested in, we do have a clinical trials team of oncology nurses who can help you see what options are out there. And not that we'll tell you what trial to go into, but it will give you something to go back to your hematologist oncologist with and say, are any of these a possible option for me? Is this something I can consider? And there's a lot going on in, in blood cancer research, thankfully, but we still, like we've been talking, there's a long way to go. So the hope is that we will get there sooner rather than later. To all of our panel members, why did you decide to pursue a career in oncology? What are your personal and professional reasons for really being so committed to oncology care? I used to work in the laboratory and I did that for about four years. And so I got to know what kind of cells were underneath the microscope. And I was able to be transferred into the cancer center where I worked at the time and when I was working in New York. And I got to know all of the patients and just, getting in touch with the patients, understanding what they were going through, understanding how much each person's job uh, in oncology or in cancer, in blood cancer research, in blood cancer treatment uh, was so important to the patient. I was able to become a, a bone marrow tech as well. So I, I, I almost felt like I was cheating when I got into my career as a PA because I had so much knowledge from that. But really getting to know the patients, understanding their backgrounds. The, the thing about blood cancers is that unfortunately, of course, in the beginning, we see our patients a lot more often than you would see a primary care provider. 
but that also gives the, you the ability to really learn about your patients, learn about their backgrounds, what their families like, uh, how they're feeling, and they get more comfortable speaking with you. And you were able to develop a real relationship with, with these patients. And it's, it's just, it's, you have this passion for it, or at least I feel like I have a passion for it. Just learning about not only the disease, which has vast uh, changes in, in treatment options because of the amazing uh, work that our researchers do, the clinical trials that everybody has mentioned have really improved the, the treatment options for our patients. And just seeing how patients do, it, it's really remarkable. It's a remarkable uh, field, and it's just remarkable to see how much change has happened just being in this field. So my answer is a little bit personal. I was raised with very passionate scientist, oncologist, my dad, who was my role model almost since I can remember myself. And I always had this wish to be an oncologist, to help patients and to potentially change their lives. And so this is something that still keeps me going, that wakes me up, uh, you know, when I wake up in the morning, this is something that I really think about. And also in the evening, when I think about my day, what I did that day really kind of fulfills me and makes me happy because I really know that we make a huge difference for cancer patients and that actually in a way I am living my dream. So when I answered the ad for the information specialist position, I was looking to learn something new and I knew nothing about blood cancer. And I didn't know how much I didn't know about blood cancer until I got into the position. But it was amazing to just go through and, and understand how complex it is and how there's so much to know. So every time I talk to someone on the phone who either has been diagnosed or has a loved one, I can I can go back to that feeling overwhelmed of, oh my gosh, I don't know what I don't know and <laughs> how important it is to really understand what it is that you have and why and, and how it gives you more of a sense of understanding and just more peace to know, okay, I'm not completely overwhelmed because I, I know where I have to go or who I need to talk to or what I need to do next. And every time I, even after all of this time, I get to talk to someone on the phone or however, through an email or whatever it may be, just getting those thank yous back or somebody saying, you know, thank you just for listening or just helping me understand a little bit better. I really was confused or I didn't even know where to go next. And knowing that I was able to give them those next steps to help them get where they need to be is just rewarding every day. We know that September is Blood Cancer Awareness Month. And for those of us who are engaged in the blood cancer community, it's, it's really an opportunity um, for people to understand this type of cancer and to also be aware of information and resources available for those who are diagnosed with a blood cancer or their caregiver. So are there any particular resources or support groups that you would like people to be aware of during the month of the September Blood Cancer Awareness Month and throughout the year? Sure, as we've been talking about, resources and support are huge and very important with blood cancer. Um, at the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, we have a lot of different options for both. Um, we have, through our support, we have local regions throughout the United States and Canada that patients and caregivers can reach out to and get um, involved in whatever might be going on in their local area. A lot of our support groups are still on Zoom because we know a lot of blood cancer patients still have concerns with COVID and a lot of, you know, being immunocompromised. So we want to make sure that they get the support that they need despite maybe not being able to go anywhere or they may be in treatment. Uh, we have online groups that they can go to um, that are moderated by social workers. We have a first connection program where they can talk to other blood cancer survivors and just talk to someone who can relate to what they're going through and just get some support that way. We have a lot of ways to get information. We have booklets, we have webcasts, we have podcasts. We have, you pretty much name it. We can find a way for you to get some information about what you need to know and, and find something that's relatable. The other way to do that is to reach out to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and you can reach us at www.lls.org. 
Well, Michelle, we're certainly very appreciative of organizations like the LLS and Alexis App Show as well that help provide information and resources to patient caregivers um, and also the healthcare community. Well, I hope you found the conversation with the blood cancer experts we've convened to truly be useful and informational to you. At AbbVie, we are creating a company that is making transformative discoveries and meaningful impact for people living with blood cancers. Through our pipeline and partnerships, we are adding depth and breadth to our oncology portfolio, all with the goal of continuing to set new standards of care for multiple forms of blood cancer and those that really have significant unmet need today. To learn more about what is a blood cancer and to learn more about blood cancer research that is happening today, please go visit abby.com. Thank you for listening today. This concludes our Blood Cancer Explained panel series. We would like to thank our esteemed panelists for their participation. As a reminder, please note the educational content of this video is not intended to be taken as medical advice and should not replace the recommendations and advice of your doctor. Please take a moment to review the disclaimer displayed on your screen. For more information, please visit www.abvi.com. Thank you again for joining us.